Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX TV in San Francisco, and Russell Jackman. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And again, we're going to touch on that uh, topic we did last time, more baseball literature. We'll see, right. how, we'll see how well-versed you guys are in your baseball literature. All right. Um, I've got a couple of things that I want to talk about uh, coming up here in the next segment. Uh, George Kittle, a little bit of Dwayne, uh, The Rock Johnson. Uh, oh, I bet in my... Yeah, I, I, I knew you'd catch on to that one, Russell. Uh, and what do, you, what do you guys think the odds of the uh, Marlins winning the World Series? Uh, how about zero? How about, how about that? that? Okay. How about, you know what? We even, I, what are the odds that we have a World Series? Well, they got to have something. What are they going to do? How can they have baseball but not have a World Series? Is it, how are we going to have baseball? That's well, well, oh, oh, if they totally get rid of baseball, yeah. But if they, if they have baseball, they got to have a World Series. That's uh, an if, not a win. Well, I was looking at this. the uh, The odds of the uh, of the Marlins winning, or like they they call it plus fifty thousand. I think they mean like fifty thousand to one, or so. I don't know if that's how it works. But apparently, the Orioles are twice as bad. Why is that? I don't know. Uh, are there that many COVID cases there, or is it? Uh, they're just that awful. It's We've just not, that awful. We, I mean, we haven't we haven't really reported much on on the Orioles, but the Orioles are five and three in their division. Yeah, and that's just that's just one of those teams that we were talking about at the beginning of this. Because in 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 a, in a sixty game season, those that get get off to a good fast start, yeah. you know, have a real chance in this thing. Absolutely. All right, this segment of Sports Econ One Hundred and One is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding over seven and a half percent secured by real estate. Check them out. Uh, it doesn't get any more conservative than that at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. Sports Econ One Hundred and One is going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. All right, guys, let's start off right off the bat. George Kittle, all right? So this guy, you know, he was in his rookie year before, and, and uh, he made a big impact. And, you know, these, the way these contracts are, you know, hey, if you're a rookie, you know, your contract is fairly low no matter how mm -hmm. good you play. But I kind of look at a guy like him, and this is one of those things where I think the management, the ownership, should – go to him and say, look, I know we're only, we only are obligated to pay you X, but you've done such a good job. We want to keep you as a, uh, you know, a, a formidable player, uh, you know, to, to have loyalty to us. We're going to pay you, you know, three times X or four times X, whatever it is. They offered it to pay him five times what he's making now, and that's not enough. Yeah, Edward, what, what, what you have to understand, Edward, he's entering the last year of that deal. He yeah. was just he was just voted as the sixth best player in the league. Yeah. Not only is he the best player on the team, sixth best player in the league, and by far he is the best tight end in the league. Austin Hooper right now is the highest paid tight end in the league, and he's way better than him. So yeah. he deserves a, a a bigger deal than that. But his value is so high. His argument is that, or his agent's argument is that. He needs to be in the category where he needs to get paid receiver money because he does yeah. much, so much more at that position than block and and and, and catch passes. He's a great blocker, but yeah. but he is so versatile. They need to start talking about a contract extension where they're they're approaching the the, the twenty million a year plateau, not so right. much and the that's, that's thirteen the million dollar a year plateau, and yeah. that. And therein lies the problem, and that's why both sides reportedly are far apart. Now, this this will get done. It needs to get done before the season begins. Already, camp has opened. They're going to have their first practice on this Saturday. They put the pads on in a couple of weeks. But this need this needs to get resolved quickly. I think, yeah. my opinion. He is a, a once in a generation type tight end. I mean, you don't see. Other than, than Kelsey, I, there's nobody else in his class um, that, that's out there. He's like a young Jimmy Graham, and you can't just let him go. But on the other hand, tight ends earn up to $10 million. That's what we have right now, $10 million a season. And he wants $18 million a season. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that in the sense that I know the 49ers have the money for it. 
The problem that I have is that by doing so, he's going to eat up every single cent of the salary cap and handicap the 49ers from being able to get any other players. Well, that's every well, bit well, 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 that's when the agent really needs to do his job and work with the 49ers, and that's when Prague Marate, who with the 49ers is a salary cap guru, and that's where they have to come up with crafty ways to structure a deal, so maybe, creative, part, yeah. maybe, maybe partly incentive laden where if he if he if he if he reaches this then this part of the contract kicks in where it doesn't necessarily go against the salary cap yeah and 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 i believe and i believe i believe it will work out that way well the 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 thing i've always kind of pointed out was i I always got a little frustrated no i mean not hugely but just uh, a little bit with players who uh just decide during the 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 season or during their during their contract they they just go and say you know what i don't want to do it for this i think i'm worth more okay that's one thing but someone like kittle would have been something i would have hoped that the 49ers would have before the agent even gets involved to say you know what we need to renegotiate this you know to to them to just say you know what you've done such a good job you don't even have to approach us we're going to come to you and say this is what we'd like to they offered him 10 million but this will Okay, after he, he was earning 2.5 and they offered him 10 million a season. They said they the 49ers went to him and said, "We'll pay you the highest amount of money that any tight end gets in the NFL." And that's still not good enough for him. He wants what a receiver the, what the Okay, then I, I I misread what I had read about a week ago, which was that, you know, it was coming up his contract was going to be coming up. Mm-hmm. And so the negotiation started. And uh, I, I guess maybe what I'm thinking of is, is like, let's say if you have a rookie who's, who's earning rookie salary and during the year, I, I, assuming you're not hitting the, cal- the cap, which I guess most of them are, is like if you see a guy doing really well during the season, is there anything to stop you as, a, as an owner from bonusing out? Well, no, no, I mean, it's, no. go, 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 ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead, Mr. Jackman. Go ahead. Yeah, no, there's nothing that stops you contractually from, from – doing that except that when you do that you obviously are risking that you know the very next time he goes out to play he goes and and you know breaks his knee or you know uh uh, has true you can always put a copy on it but i don't know i just i like rewarding guys who kind of go over and above what you're expecting and he's and 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 kittle certainly has done this absolutely And and if if you've noticed or if you've been watching or read or 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 whatever you really haven't heard a soundbite from Kittle on this mm-hmm. subject. He just talks about football, and yeah. so which which is very smart on his part. Now, I'm I'm sure when he is made available to us in a media Zoom chat, it will come up, yeah. whether it's weighing on his mind or whatever, and he'll give some company line about I ah, I just let my guy take care of it, and I just. I just want to be with the guys. That's what he probably will say. Yeah. Probably what he should say. I wonder how, you know, uh, how, and again, I'm being in the players' heads, how much of it is how much do they want versus how much they realize if they leave some on the table, you know, they want to win a championship. You got to think that all these guys want to win championships. I think, I think if you're a veteran player that's been around a long time and had not won, yeah. that then becomes more important. But Kittle's young. I mean, he's just yeah. kind of coming up. And, and, and I, think, I think what Kittle and what the agent sees are what like the, the Austin Hoopers and the Zach Ertz and, 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 and what they're bringing to the table, Travis Kelsey, and, and they're like, huh, well, yeah, they're great players, but look at what I've done and look at, and, look at, and look at how much more potential I have yeah. to even be – even greater that's than that. Complete, that's completely fair. And, I, think, now, I think now, and, that, I, and I'm sure, and I'm sure if, 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 I'm, if I'm Kittle, maybe I'm thinking that, yeah. but he's paying his agent to make it happen. And, and what we run into is the, is the complication of the slotting of people based on position, the paying of people based on what other players get yeah. by position versus what you want to pay them for their actual value to the team. Yeah, because typically tight ends make among the lowest, don't they? Right. And so that and that's only because because the owners could get away with that. You know, yeah. um, uh, 
But you do look at a guy like Kittle, who is not just a, a really a wide receiver, but also one of the better blockers of the team. Yeah, and having and having said that, you know, you're absolutely right, Mr. Jackman. Having said that, I believe his value to the 49ers is is just as important as say a left tackle, which oh, yeah. is another marquee position in the league. Which yeah, is but, interesting because that that actually became the uh, you know after um, Joe Theismann's injury that that really seemed to highlight how important that position is. Mm -hmm. But Aaron, now guys are really time. trying to to look at other positions and say, I should be paid what this other position should be paid, you know, and Jimmy Graham went through the same sort of thing. Yeah, and at, at the time, Jimmy Graham, at, at his height, Jimmy Graham, he was the man before the right. injury set in. Yep. All right, guys, cutting to the first commercial break. We're talking again, baseball literature, a little more sophisticated this time. Okay. Uh, do you remember last week we uh, had uh, Jim Bouton in uh, ball four? We had a question about that. That's right. Another question about that. Last time it was, you know, which team was he? The expansion team was the Seattle Pilots. Okay, but here's another Jim Bouton question. In Ball Four, he writes about his efforts to get back to the majors using what pitch? What pitch was he thinking about which would get him back into the majors? Uh, email edward at sportsecom101.com. The answer to that question, we'll see if you know uh, your baseball literature and stay with us uh, because we are going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Our first trivia question about baseball literature. Jim Bowden in Ball Four writes about his efforts to get back to the majors using what pitch? At the risk of being vilified for this answer, I'm going to guess the knuckleball. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Right. Yeah, I figure the only that, specialized uh, pitch I could think of was the EFAS pitch. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys remember the Eagles? I do. Oh, of course. Ted Williams hitting it uh, for a home run in the uh, All Star game, nineteen forty seven. I don't remember which year, but uh, <laughs> that was kind of funny. So, uh, Mr. Glenn, you uh, were talking off air about how uh, the PGA Championship. Yeah, the, the PGA Championship is in the Bay Area. It's in San Francisco. It's going to be played at Harding Park, and for the first time in its ninety five year history, Harding Park will be hosting. A golf major is the first major of the year. Players have been filtering in over the past few days. And as we speak, uh, at the taping of the show, which we typically do on a Tuesday, press conferences are going on all day. Tiger Woods is going to speak in just a little bit. So practice rounds will be ongoing through Wednesday. The first round, of course, will be Thursday, Friday, and then the last two rounds will be carried by our TV station, KPIX, a CBS affiliate, on Saturday and <laughs> Sunday, which makes this really unique is this tournament is going to be played with no spectators. There's only 50 accredited members of the media that will be allowed on the course. You have to be tested to get on the course. And uh, it's, it's going to, you're, you're going to see more of Harding Park than you've ever seen before because all the grandstand seatings, all the tier seatings, all of those are gone. There's no merchandise tent. There were plans for an 82,000 square foot merchandise tent full of cash machines. But with no spectators, wow. that, merch, that, that, that merchandise tent is now going to be the, the player's locker room. But, uh, wow. but, uh, the, but, the, but the course is beautiful. It's a combination of rye and Kentucky bluegrass, and, and it, it, it is shaped, ready to go. Par 70. 7,234 yards, and the reason why it's in August is because of the coronavirus. Originally, this tournament was supposed to be played mid-May, but it got pushed back to August. And so, uh, Carl the Fog will be rolling in. That's that, that's and, the part and, that and I was so, going to get to. And, yeah. so, and so, you know, players are, you know, they're, I mean, they've played in all different kinds of, 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 of conditions, but... These rounds are going to be long starting early Thursday morning. There's going to be some marquee matchups of past champions and other major championships. But, uh, but, uh, the, but the ones that are going off early or even in the afternoon are going to show up, I, I would imagine, bundled up yeah. and be prepared to peel off as the rounds go on, given the conditions. Now, the, the, the overall, 
Go that's going to be my question to you, B, is that for those of you who don't live in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, the old Mark Twain, the, the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer, was a in, San summer in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. And, and you and, might not have actually said. Well, okay. Well, we'll still give him credit for it, though. Okay. He didn't say it, but Samuel Clemens said it. Um, and, uh, and so they, for a lot of people who don't know, you know, people come to San Francisco in, in quote, the summertime and think that it's, you know, just like it is in Georgia, and uh, it's no, it's usually well. They just, well, they think they think it. They think it's just like it is in the Los Angeles area. In Los Angeles, that, yeah, yeah, that's actually yeah. better. That's a better. Well, and example. I blame TV for that. I blame TV for that. Whenever you see TV, and they they have somebody in San Francisco, and they say, "Oh, I'm going to go to L.A." And they get in their car, and the next scene, they're in Los Angeles. <laughs> you make it think that like it's an hour drive, <laughs> right? And no, seriously, I talk to people all the time that are not in California. And they go, well, I'm going to be in Los Angeles. Why don't you come by, stop by and see me? <laughs> right. And I right. go, yeah, okay. And you can wait another six and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> be over there in just in just a don't, moment. Don't, don't don't they look at a globe or a map and see that it's not like it, East it Coast looks, where you it go looks from close when, on the map. No, they, 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 don't, they don't even think it's that. They just go, hey, we're going to California. And I, and I'm I'm somewhat guilty of that. I moved out here 30 years ago for the job, and 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 coming from Baltimore, and I. The the, the 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 misconception back there is well it's California it has to be yeah. warm top to bottom you don't know there's a difference between Northern California and Southern California you, you they think our know. state is as small there. as their states yeah. well, and, and Northern California normally is pretty warm like we, we live just across the uh, all of us live ac across the bridge well as, as you get further away from the bay of course yeah, yeah. it gets a little warmer yeah it was 90 93 degrees yesterday yeah yeah it was, so it was in it was Nevada, a so yes. So, um, yeah, I was going to say, so they would normally play in May, which is, is fine weather. October is actually a very good month to, to be in San Francisco to, to, to play a tournament. Um, so there, there were no other golf courses in August that they could have chosen? Well, Edward, Harding Park was picked like six years ago as the site of this by the PGA. You don't just, you don't just change the mind at the, at the last second and pick another course. So much has no, but to they be. Did change the, they changed the month, though. Well, they had, they, they had to push back the month because of COVID. Yeah. They decided to do so that. that. that but you changed. can't change the venue. You, 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 you can't. This, 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 was, this was six years in the making. I mean, this had to be, this had to be green lighted by the San Francisco Parks and Rec. Yeah, the sure. The PGA. I mean, the, all There's a lot of things, of things that go in. Had, I get it. Yeah, so so many like, backdoor like things gonna, had to be done. It's not like they're going to change from like say instead of playing golf, we're going to play soccer instead. It's right, like, right, yeah. right, right, right. So, well, uh, who who will have to be wearing masks? I'm will sorry. Play, will the players be wearing masks? No, or, the players will not be wearing. I mean, you know, like, like 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 I said, uh, you have to be tested mm -hmm. before. Yeah, you know, all the players have been tested. And, uh, and, 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 you know, TV crews and stuff like that, I mean, have been tested before you even get onto the, the complex. So I, I, I believe perhaps the, 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 the marshals of the course and, and other, other people on the course will have to be, wear masks, but the players are, are, will not be required to. Some might. I mean, it's kind of up to them. But, uh, I know, but I, if, I, I, again, it's not like, not like I know, I know in the pra I know in the practice rounds that we've seen so far, none of the players have been wearing masks. Yeah, that that I, if I were if I were playing, that would kind of throw me off a little bit. You know, it's not it's not that I you know you need to breathe heavily like you you would in football, but but still, it's just it's different. It's like you know when I used to bowl and they used to say, "Well, why don't you wear this shirt?" Mm -hmm. it's like, well, that's if it's not that comfortable for me, forget it. I'm not doing it. Now, in the case of John Daly, who won the 1991 PGA Championship, he just recently pulled out and he was citing medical reasons. He's a diabetic. He just had knee surgery. The thought of getting on a plane and crowds, all that kind yeah. of stuff. He just, it just, he just said it just, it just wasn't for him. And that's why he withdrew from the tournament. Totally respect that. So, so, so when you withdraw, then the, then, then that alternate takes over the spot. But, uh, but, but at the beginning, 97 of the top 100 ranked players in the world were in this field. Right now it'll be over 90. But uh, it, it's 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 going to be some great great golf. I can't wait to see it. Well, at least you know. Again, right now you know football's not playing, and baseball's got kind of sort of this wiggy thing. Golf seems to be, except for just not the fans, seems to be kind of on a normal course, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I think so. But uh, you know, but uh, but you throw you throw the word major out there, major championship. Then that then then even even the casual sports fan will step will, will step up and yeah. and take notice, especially if Tiger is in contention for 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 this kind of thing. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of cool, you know. As you drive in to the, you, and you look, there's a there's there's a whole parking lot, and 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 in each individual space are are, are nameplates in the parking lot of, of past champions. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty cool to see. How going think, back, how far the, the whole, how, how far back do those names go? It, it's, it's parking spaces for past champions who are in this field. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And uh, before we cut to break, just uh, noticing that the, uh, the saints are uh, staying safe by sequestering. Not, you know, uh, apparently they're staying in a nice hotel down in the French Quarter. And uh, I guess players have an option to, to stay there or not. But uh, when you look at what's happening in baseball, it's, that seems like a really smart idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah don't, for, don't forget Sean Payton. He was the first of two NFL coaches who contracted COVID-19. Doug Peterson of the Eagles currently is quarantining himself because he has contracted COVID-19. But but theirs has not been like life threatening, right? I mean, they've just no, oh no, and they're getting no. <laughs> but you know, they you know they they you know they you know they get it. You have to self quarantine. Yeah, no, no, that's smart. And uh, it's interesting because the Jaguars have an NFL high twelve players, and uh, you know, thinking about um, uh, the Marlins too, it's like why is everything happening in Florida? <laughs> has people? Gee, are, I, gee, gee, I wonder. Uh, yeah, no, people not being quite as. Uh, or, or, as they might. Uh, let me ask you this, man. I know you got to go to break or whatever, but but uh, any of you guys, any of you guys of the mind of uh, I, I'll believe it when I see, when I see head to head collisions on the field and games actually being played, then I'll actually believe that that, that the football is going to be able to pull this thing off. I I, I think I'm kind of like that too. I I, well, uh, I can believe it for the first game. What I'm not going to believe is you know by game three or four. But I, you know, I could see them smashing together the first one or two games. What's going to be, you know, are we going to face what's going on with, with Florida? Are we going to face what's going on with St. Louis, where, you know, entire teams are going to basically be. No, you know what they do? Go back to the old days when we were kids and you played flag football. And, and there's no tackling, you know. You gotta, That's still <laughs> on contact spread it. That's still a close enough contact. You well, probably could spread it. That's so. true. All right, coming to our second trivia question here. Baseball literature. Many of the most entertaining books are written by ex-catchers. Which former catcher wrote about the humorous side of baseball in his bestseller, Baseball is a Funny Game? All right, that's our trivia question. Email Edward at sportsecom101.com to answer that question. And don't touch that dial because we're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown, Vern Glenn, Russell Jackman, we're all here. Second trivia question was, many of the most entertaining books are written by ex-catchers. Which former catcher wrote about the humorous side of baseball in his bestseller, Baseball is a Funny Game? Johnny Bench? No. Bob, Bob Uecker? No. Joe Garagiola. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he had some stories. Yeah. Joe, yeah, yeah, Joe was able to really parlay quite a broadcasting career after his playing days. Yeah, because he was show, kind of a doing, doing baseball game of the week at the day show. Yep. I mean, he, he was, you know, the Rose Bowl parade. Oh, yeah, he, he was, he was quite, he, quite versatile. I mean, he was a, you know, as a, as a, as a major league baseball catcher, he was just kind of mediocre, wasn't he? No, yeah. I think, I, I, I think if you make, I think if you make the majors. No, no, I know. I know. Player. I, know. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I'm talking about just strictly comparison to to other, you know, compared to a Johnny. Yeah, he's not known for his stats. Oh, well, I, 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 yeah. Compared to Hall of Famers, no, he wasn't a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But he, but he, but he was good enough to be in the show. Oh, absolutely. No, listen, I, I totally get that. Anybody who makes it up to there, especially in baseball, with you know, double A sing, you know, single A, double yeah. A, triple A, I totally get that. Um, let's see here. Just a couple other things. Uh, star. Angels player Otani, he's not going to be able to pitch for six weeks. So this uh, double-edged uh, um, uh, weapon is uh, going to be a single-edged weapon, isn't he? For a while, he's not going to be able to pitch. You know, he can still. And in again. six weeks, that, that that's pretty much the whole season. Yeah. 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 He got kind of shelled, didn't he? And I mean, he said his, his uh, ERA was like. Uh, 
through the stratosphere. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, you know, yeah, think about this. We're, we're just past one sixth of the season. Yeah. Yeah. But that's they did Tommy John surgery though. Yeah. 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 So that, that's going to, that's going to hoit a little bit. And then uh, Dwayne, the rock Johnson buys the defunct XFL from Vince this McMahon. is he the found, XFL. He found the, the loose change in his couch. Yeah. It's only 15 million, which is $15 million. million. <laughs> Vince McMahon, I think, paid more than a hundred million dollars, or sunk more than a hundred million dollars. Well, he was well, well, he was looking at bankruptcy, and so, uh, so yeah, so, he, so he the Rock, it out of bankruptcy. The Rock just picked it up essentially off the scrap heap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and um, I don't think it's going to be a success, even with the Rock behind it. He's a he's a genius, he's a marketing genius. But I just we don't have room for another football league, and now the cost of doing foot, football is outrageous. <laughs> So I don't think he's going to be able to make, make it. Well, especially easy, with the COVID thing. You know? I, 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 will hold, I will hold judgment until they come out with a plan. I mean, if he, if he buys it, he can just, he can just kind of like put it up in the shelf for a couple of years and then pull it back out if, if there's a viable plan, especially if, oh. especially if we're past the COVID-19. I mean, there's just nothing that says, oh, I just bought it. I have to use it right now. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Sure. Yeah. Uh, then the uh, players will switch around a little bit, but, yeah, but either way, I mean, fifteen million dollars to him is like uh, no. twenty-five bucks to you or me. The Rock, the Rock has money falling out of his ears. Well, well, he's not a billionaire, so what? What's he worth? All he has to do is do another movie, and it's paid for. <laughs> you know, one one more one more summer blockbuster, <laughs> and he's good. And uh, you know, there. In fact, I was reading that. Um, uh, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth yeah, uh -huh. is is being considered for a biopic for Hulk Hogan. Is, is considered what? They're considering casting him in a biopic, a, a bio a biography pick of Hulk Hogan. He's going to be wow. Hulk Hogan in, huh. the, in in a new. In layman Hulk terms, Hogan. Edward, he's been casted to play the role of Hulk Hogan. Oh, there you go. In a, in a feature length movie. Okay. okay, I just couldn't hear Russell as well from from his mic. Right, gotcha. oh, right. Oh, that, uh, I mean, he's not tall enough, but uh, well, he can bulk up. He's got time. No, you tall know? though. He's not tall, tall. Hogan yeah. was much yeah. taller. Well, Hulk, no, Hogan, what, what was Hulk Hogan? Six six. He's like six eight. Yeah. Okay. He's really yeah. Six eight. Yeah, I tell you, when he played Thunderlips, man, he was a I'll force to be. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 tell you a quick story. This but this had to be about 19, 1980, 88. Okay. The uh, the uh, uh, wrestling came to Baltimore, and and they gave me Hulk Hogan as a guest. He's the first one I ever interviewed while standing in a chair, <laughs> and he was still taller than I was. <laughs> and uh, and and he just asked me out of the blue. Uh, he's like, uh, "How's your love life?" And uh, and I said, I, I said, "Well, it's kind of like a light bulb. Instead of saying uh, you know off and on, I said in and out." And he just and he just looked at me like, "Oh." <laughs> but it was, uh, but, but I'll, I'll always remember that. <laughs> That's great. Um, let's see. Oh, so uh, for those who don't know, we uh, we lost uh, one of our own here in uh, the Bay Area, Ralph Barbieri. Uh, how well known was he outside the Bay Area? Say again, uh, Ralph, Bar Ralph Barbieri. Bar he wasn't yeah. really a outside of the Bay Area, yeah. not at all. Not I at mean, all. This, this 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 really kind of applies to our viewers and our listeners that are in the Bay Area. Ralph Barbieri was a, uh, uh, I wouldn't say he was Mike Francesa from WFAN, mm. but, 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 but he, he had a style about him and a delivery about him that was unique. They called him the razor voice. He sounded just like Joe Pesci. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and he was just known as, 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 as a very passionate San Francisco homegrown uh, you know, local sports guy that would, you know, challenge the guests that he would have on. He started off filling in for a guy uh, by the name of Dave Newhouse at KMBR. Oh, and, and, yeah. and, he would, and he would do sports <laughs> updates with, uh, during Dave's show. And then whenever Dave was out, then Ralph would fill in for Dave doing Sports Phone 680. Then Dave moved on, and then Ralph started doing Sports Phone 680, which was the nightly show. And then, and then he went from that to afternoon drive time, and and he and it was a solo act, and 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 Ralph didn't have much humor to him, 
So he because he was just so I intense. I think the term all hard the boiled. I think yeah. the, the term hard boiled. Yeah, yep, yep, he was. For, but uh, but in 1998, they paired him with Tom Tolbert, who had recently retired from the NBA, a former Golden State Warrior, and then boom, it took off for the next 15 and a half years. The Razor and Mr. T show dominated afternoon drive time on KMBR. You know, the hard part for me, I I just had a hard time with his voice. I, you know, it was hard for me to listen. That's why that, that, that that's why it probably would not it, would it work today? No. Would it work in other markets? No. But again, he was San Francisco, he was homegrown, and and somehow it worked for him. It was the perfect big cop, bad cop type thing. It was the perfect, uh, yeah. uh, in a wrestling connotation, <laughs> uh, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. You just mm-hmm. had, you know, the, the, the seriousness of Ralph, who really never really cracked a joke in the 15 years he was on yeah. KNBR. And you had Tom Tolbert, who couldn't take anything seriously. Right point in time, but and yeah. Tom's Tom's great. I mean, he's very personal. He's matured a lot. He's matured a lot. But in his early years, he was just a punster. You know, he was just throwing you know jokes around left and right, and and using um, Ralph as the straight man. And the two of them had that perfect straight man Joker chemistry that was uh, you know I listened to all the time. And but Tom certainly Tom- was a nice relief after Rush Limbaugh was done yeah. spouting off his problem. A lot of people don't remember that KNBR used to be the home of Rush Limbaugh for many, many huh. years. That's well, true. That's true. And for, and, for, and, for those, and for those of the viewers and the listeners that are like scratching their heads just going, well, what, what, what happened to him? Unfortunately, Ralph uh, lost his battle with Parkinson's disease at mm-hmm. the age of 74. And he also was a type 2 diabetic. Uh, Not a good time to be around in the time of COVID, yeah. unfortunately. Maybe, you know, and and, and he, did, he didn't get a chance at a farewell show because it was a kind of a bitter departure yeah. that he, he, was uh, fired. he had with KBR. Well, well he, 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 he announced in 2011 that he had Parkinson's. Six months later, four months later, KBR fired him. And then he put in a lawsuit citing uh, ageism. He was 66 at the time and the fact that he had Parkinson's. And... He was he never got settle. a last show. He was he never, he never got, got a last show, but but he but he did walk out with a sizable seven figure paycheck as part of a settlement. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I, yeah so uh, it's uh, I I feel I, I I big big loss for Bay Area radio sports scene, and uh, he survived by his sister Annette and his son Tate. He was one of the Bay Area greats. I mean, I one of a kind. On that same level as like a Herb Cain or a Gary Radnich, just someone that was a big, something so synonymous with San Francisco. Maybe not. Well, San well again, when, when he opened his mouth, you knew exactly who it was. <laughs> and, and, and for a while, all he had to do was just say the name Ralph, and everybody knew you were talking about Ralph Barbieri. And that was his natural voice, too, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was. It's like Ray Ratto, you know, just one of those guys that just, that always said what was on his mind and didn't mind the heat of saying what exactly was his opinion on anything. And, 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 a, and a little known fact, I mean, he, he, he factored in big and getting Measure C passed to get that ballpark built. Yeah, he really Giants. did push for that. Yep. Wow. Not bad, not bad. Uh, guys, what do you want to cover in the last two minutes before we cut to our last break? Um, let's see. What have we got going on here? Well, I'm just really concerned about watching – I mean, I like what the NBA is doing. We're seeing how the difference between having a bubble scenario where guys can't leave and can't go do their own thing once they're done versus baseball where guys, as soon as they leave the park, have no control. You know, the the teams have no control over their actions. We're seeing in baseball a lot of these guys getting sick, a lot of these teams getting infected, whereas in the NBA this bubble is holding – and making sure that guys aren't teams aren't coming all down with COVID nineteen, I think that the NFL needs to look very strongly at the at what uh, uh, the NBA is doing, and maybe consider instead of going to every different park for each game, just having a couple central locations for playing NFL games and just quarantining yeah. teams for the the length. Do you of the think season. there's a maturity level between? Basketball players and football play or ba- uh, baseball players. No, just okay. Is it just? Oh, I, oh, I, I, I think so, Russ. I mean, I, I, I blame. I totally blame 
the, 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 the players for the Cardinals and the Marlins, those are the ones that chose to leave the hotel and go out to the club. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, were well, they needing Lou Williams? They, there. they need, they needed to, they, they, you, you, but you, you, one you cited one guy, you cited one guy <laughs> in the NBA. There, there's, there's, yes, there, there were 13, 13 members of the Cardinals organization that contracted it. They had to put Marlin players on a bus to go from Philadelphia back to Miami because they could not get them on the plane. Wow. It, it, it's come to the point where the, the baseball commissioner said, I will shut this down if you don't comply. Yeah. But at I don't think at, be at the at beginning, let me, let me finish. At All the right. beginning, at the beginning, those baseball players were said, you, we strongly suggest that you stay in the hotel, go to the ballpark, and then come back. Well, they didn't do that. They just they just felt like, well, hey, we can just do what we want, and they left the hotel, and and the, and they went out night clubbing. And I, I mean, think they're, 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 they're putting they're putting they're putting everybody at risk yeah. by doing that. That is so immature yeah. and so irresponsible. To, to, to do that, and look what has happened. You've, got, think, you've had the cancellation of series. You've had the cancellations yeah. of games. And it may be a cancellation of the season if this does not continue. And I think, I think part of it is because, you know, basketball players know that there's, you know, there's contact close. But baseball players are kind of thinking, you know, I'm playing the game. I'm not next to anybody, et cetera. Hey, guys, got to cut to the last commercial break here. We'll, we'll talk right. a little bit more when we come back. So baseball literature. Okay, Vern. Getting, getting, Vern getting into a Zen zone again. Well, it just uh, it just it just pisses me off that these guys, they these baseball players, they had meetings. They were they there've been yeah. conferences. They've been told this is how it needs to work, Absolutely. and then they just don't follow the know, rules. Just, if the NBA have, wasn't quarantined like they were, the same thing would be happening. You're okay. right, but yes, they but, but they, they, they are, and they and there've been no positive tests. Okay, here we go. Uh, which catcher turned broadcaster wrote baseball for brain surgeons? All right, he wrote with, baseball for brain surgeons. Yeah, he wrote a booklet. <laughs> Stay with us, Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, Edward Brown here along with Fern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Third trivia question Which catcher turned broadcaster wrote baseball for brain surgeons? No idea. I'm gonna throw out Johnny Bench and be yeah, it's Tim McCarver. Oh, Tim McCarver. Tim McCarver wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you know all those uh, catchers. They kind of they're the they're the quarterback of the baseball field, so they probably have a lot of stories. You think, you know, interacting with the uh, batters. What's that? Can't wait to read Buster's. You think he's re I, yeah? I don't know. I, it's interesting. He doesn't. Uh, he seems sort of a little bit too low key, doesn't he? He. I think he's observed a lot. And oh, of he course, can, he's observed a lot. You know. Yeah, I think when he has a chance to say something, I think it'll actually be very well written. So yeah. I'm didn't didn't Tim McCarver have kind of a run in with uh, Deion Sanders? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> it was on TV. Kind of. It was during the World Series. I know. I was kind trying to of. remember. I was trying to remember. If it was Tim McCarver. It was him, wasn't it? San Sanders sought him out and then and then, and then threw water on him. <laughs> well, and That's what was right. the what was the the tiff between between them? Why did he do that? He called he called out Deion Sanders for not for, for not hustling on a particular play. That's what it was. And 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 this and this was back when Deion was playing in the World Series yeah. and playing yeah. for the Atlanta Falcons at the same time. Yeah. And then and then and Deion got mad and got a bucket of water and, and threw it on <laughs> Tim McCarver. Oh well, yeah, that, that was really famous. That was pretty good. Okay. Guys. Hey, hey, I know. Hey, I, I I know we have to go, and I know yeah. you're going to wrap up, and I know we have baseball on the brain all the time. But I do have a program suggestion for you on Netflix. It's okay. called Last Chance You. It's season five, and it's a series that focuses on junior college football, and, wow. and it goes through an entire season, telling you yep. the backstories of these players who were once D1 guys, but then were washed out, and then junior college was like their last chance in order to make it back to college football and then and beyond. It's, it's Sounds interesting. Show. We'll yes. write that down. We'll watch it. Okay, here's our thoughts. And it's on Laney day. College in Oakland Got this year. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, my wife just found out I replaced our bed with a trampoline, and she hit the roof. And uh, <laughs> Adam and Eve were the uh, first people to not read the Apple terms and conditions. Uh, and lastly, I've been repeating the same mistakes in life for so long now, I think I'll start calling them traditions. All right, uh, tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, Adios. everyone. Aloha.